12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMS 8, 8 a.m., a family of four in the hospital after a terrifying crash. What we know about the children who were inside the vehicle and the charges the driver could now face. Plus a standoff between the Democratic and Republican parties. We are hearing what both sides have to say in today's leading essay segment. And back here at home in the Alamo City, 77 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does your work week look like? Sarah Coast, did you make it outside yesterday? I did for a short bit. My uh, jalapenos are now jalapenos turning red. Jalapenos, you made jalapenos. <laughs> what else are you growing out there? Um, you know, jalapenos, okra, parsley. Fancy. Um, uh, I, I've been dealing with a cold, so mm. I had um, some fresh peppermint tea. Oh, so fancy. Well, good morning. Thank <laughs> you so much for starting your Sunday with us. Eight o'clock this Sunday, July 18th again. Happy Sunday. You made it outside yesterday. Chef's kiss of a day. Chef's <laughs> kiss. And, you know, I'm not complaining about the rain, Sarah, because my garden looks beautiful with all this rain and, you know, and maybe some more in our future. That's exactly right. In the week ahead, we've got a pretty rainy forecast to talk about, but if you're hoping to get outside today, it's going to be a lot like yesterday, so we're not really worried about rain today around San Antonio. Meanwhile, outside right now, we're seeing these morning clouds start to break up. It's 78 degrees. We've already got a heat index, though. It already feels like it's 81 because of the high humidity out there. Uh, now, uh, outside in some areas, not necessarily around San Antonio, but in the metro area out toward New Braunfels, we're dealing with some fog visibility down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels. Pretty thick there down to five in Castroville and five in Pleasanton. But again, there could be if you're driving around San Antonio, there could be areas of patchy fog in some of the valleys. I fully expect for this fog around New Braunfels to uh, lift very shortly. You can see though right there uh, on the satellite imagery, we've got some low clouds around New Braunfels and we've got some low clouds around San Antonio, but they are breaking up. It's totally sunny however for Kerrville, Bandera, Gonzalez, Nixon, Smiley and further out to the west some clouds for Uvalde uh, early this morning. Other than that though it's a mild morning. Temperatures are in the 70s, 78 degrees at the airport, 76 in New Braunfels, 76 in Hondo, 73 in Kerrville, already 80 degrees in Del Rio. It's Sunday. A lot of people are going to be firing up those backyard barbecues. If you want to do that today it's going to be great. 92 for the high temperature at noon will be at 86 in the afternoon, 92. Notice that I did put a 20% chance for a stray isolated shower this afternoon. We'll talk about those rain chances today. Again, not really significant, but in the week ahead, we are going to have some scattered showers and thunderstorms, and we're going to have to start to think about pockets of heavy rain. More on that forecast coming up in a bit. Next, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories this morning. A family of four in the hospital after crashing on the north side of town. Let's take a look. This is what we know right now. San Antonio police tell us around 1:20 this morning, family traveling eastbound on 1604 near Hebner. That's when the driver lost control, rolling several times. The driver was ejected from the vehicle. Woman in the passenger seat needed to be rescued via the jaws of life. A one year old and four year old also in the back seat. Only the baby was buckled up. Luckily, their injuries are only minor. All four taken to University Hospital to be treated. That driver now being evaluated for a DWI. Charges are still pending. A motorcyclist was thrown from his bike late last night after he said after police say his handlebars started trembling. Officers on scene tell us it happened on the highway 281 near Jones Maltzburg around 1045 last night. They say the biker lost control and hit the wall divider. The impact threw him over the wall and onto the opposite side. Opposite side. He was wearing a helmet but still suffered several fractures and road rash to his body. He was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. Police have ruled this an accident. From a house fire on the far north side of town. It happened around 9 last night. This is all happening in the 1600 block of Ledge Rock that's near Thousand Oaks. Now, fire crews on the scene telling us neighbors called into the fire when firefighters arrived. They realized that the house was on fire on the second floor, but the homeowner was out of town. Two dogs, three cats rescued. Investigators say the fire started in the attic. Believe the cause of the fire was electrical. Damages estimated between 50 and $60,000. 
And in your morning headlines, a wild situation, gunfire erupting just outside of Nationals Park and could be heard inside the stadium. That's when fans started running for cover. The scene was a chaotic one with people initially unsure about what was going on. ABC's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Schulze is at the ballpark in Washington with the latest. Overnight, chaos across Nationals Park. Fans racing out of the ballpark. Listen as the echoes of rapid gunfire interrupt the announcers. Eight to four. Mayhem as terrified fans ran for cover. We thought it was fireworks at first. As you saw more and more people running and then we heard more shots, that's when we realized it was real. So everyone started ducking for cover. And there, was a, there was a victim that was shot outside the stadium. Um, she ran into the stadium covered in blood, which freaked out a lot of individuals, which caused a lot of the chaos and the panic. Some fans running into the team's dugout, fearing an active shooter was inside the stadium. Into the Nationals dugout to get away. Yeah, people are the flooding end the dugout, the field. And into the Padres dugout now, too. It was a very chaotic scene. I don't really think anyone knew what was going on. Others sprinting to the exits, fearing for their lives. It was crazy. It was very confusing. The game suspended in the middle of the sixth inning. WBRZ reporter Dana DiPiazza captured the announcement on the stadium loudspeaker, urging terrified fans to stay calm. The action is outside of the stadium. At this time, we ask that you remain in the stadium. Police now saying the shooting happened outside the third base gate. Investigators say a total of three people were shot. Two of them are the alleged suspects. Now, police say that third victim was a fan outside of the stadium, and she is expected to recover. They're describing this as an isolated incident, but it's worth noting that just about a mile from here in a separate shooting Friday night, a six-year-old girl was killed. As for the Nats Padres game, it is expected to pick up again this afternoon. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Well, 51 years ago today, passengers at the zoo on the Eagle train at Brackenridge were held at gunpoint and Rob, today the San Antonio Zoo celebrating the anniversary of what's become to be known as the Great Little Train Robbery. Jonathan Colto joins us live from Brackenridge Park with what guests can expect today. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Yes, uh, they can expect to be robbed, but that's, of course, through reenactments. I'm at the train depot where 47 years ago uh, it was went down in history as the first train robbery in about 47 years. Uh, that It's also the last uh, train robbery that took place in the States. And, of course, I'm completely stoked about everything Wild Wild West. Now, each tri uh, trip around the park will showcase zoo actor educators in full costume, holding up the Zoo Eagle train passengers up with bubble guns, asking passengers for their donations, audio playings overhead on the train will tell the story of what happened 51 years ago. The day's events will serve as a fundraiser for much needed new trains. And of course, if you want to participate in this event, it will be taking place from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and tickets are on sale for $10. So coming out in about an hour, you can join this train and participate in the, the festivities, the celebration of the train robbery. Sarah, Max. All right. Thank you so much. Couldn't ask for a better day to be out and about there, too. I know. I only want the bubble gums. The, bubble yeah, guns. Yeah, bubble yeah. guns. Bubble guns. Bubble gum. Bubble guns. 807 degrees out. Go for it. We know you're a big Suns fan. <laughs> <laughs> Bucks at Suns last night. Big recap of the game just ahead in sports. One of the best plays of not only the finals, maybe finals history. We're going to explain. Plus, look at that crowd. Plus, a chemical spill out of Texas water park sends dozens of people to the hospital. Details on what officials say leaked into one of the pools. And a free day of fun for the whole family. Details on what you can expect at the Briscoe Museum later this week. 77 degrees at 8.09 this morning. Sarah Spivey says we should be seeing some sun today, but rain is in our future later this week. She'll explain when we come back. Welcome back. The Texas standoff continues this weekend. State Democrats and Republicans still working to figure out what, if anything, is going to come out of this special session. So joining us live from Washington, D.C. in today's leading essay segment is Democratic Representative Barbara Gervin Hawkins. Good morning, Representative. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We appreciate you spending your Sunday morning with us. So first and foremost, can you explain why you and other Texas Democrats are opposed to these proposed voting changes and what exactly in this bill prompted the move to break quorum again? Basically, it's a voter suppression bill. 
you know, one thing about it is, and for me, I reflect back on my forefathers and mothers and how they fought to give us the opportunity to vote. So when we're looking at the bill that's out there, uh, Senate Bill 1, we're looking at challenging uh, mail-in ballots, eliminating or reducing uh, hours to vote, criminalizing people, and our colleagues just wouldn't even listen. After hours and hours of testimony, they would not listen to the folks who come from all across the state of Texas to beg for their right. So we had to go. So yesterday, Representative, the news broke that three of the Texas Democrats in D.C. have tested positive for COVID-19. First off, how are they doing? And secondly, there's been a lot of controversy from Republicans about this, criticizing Democrats for not wearing masks on the plane. One Republican even claiming this might be a ploy for Democrats to get out of work again. So how do you respond to this and what safety precautions are being taken? First of all, I want to say the three that tested positive are doing well. The good news is they were vaccinated. So uh, but by having the vaccination, they have a minimum to no symptoms. That's number one, so they're doing well. Number two, it's not a ploy to anything. This is serious business. When you talk about hampering the right to vote and access to vote, that's a problem. So this is not a ploy, this is not a game. This is serious business. We need universal uh, voting ra uh, rights and laws, and not every state cherry picking what they want to do. And this is serious business. So that being said, what goals do you think can actually be achieved in D.C.? And what's the plan while you're over there? So we've been meeting every day. I'm talking from sunup to sundown. We've been on the hill. We've talked to our congressional folks. The vice president came to meet with us. We've talked to folks across the country. In the, in the cha uh, we're talking the Chamber of Commerces, we're talking about labor union folks who are all pitching in to help us. And what our goal is, is to sensitize the Senate and, the co and our congressional colleagues to move the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act and also the For the People uh, piece of legislation. We need those things moved expeditiously. And Representative, one more thing before you go. So these last few years have seemed particularly divisive in politics. Do you think that as going forward in Texas, that this will be the case? You know, it, it, it seems that way, but I want to be hopeful. Think about it. Every day we pray together with our colleagues. We pledge allegiance to the U.S. flag and the Texas flag. I'm hoping that our Republican colleagues realize this is very serious. This is very dear to our heart. We cannot go back to the days of old. We cannot. When minorities were uh, really, the dogs were leashed, the, the uh, fire hoses, and we were intimidated from voting. That shouldn't happen. That can't be America in the 21st century. All right, Representative, thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Anyone that missed any part of this interview you can watch it all on KSAT.com. And then coming up at 830, we expect to hear from Representative Steve Allison. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having us, having me. Thank you. All right, well, the Briscoe Western Art Museum hosting a National Day of Cowboy Celebration next Saturday, July 24th. So the Cowboy Fun Under the Sun is an annual event. It's taking place from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. The free community event features indoor and outdoor activities for all ages and free admission to the museum and its exhibitions. Guided tours of the museum will be available with bilingual options and will highlight artworks that relate to cowboys, cowgirls, and vaqueros. For more information about the event, just look for the story on the homepage of our website at ksat.com. And Sarah, today should be a good day to get out and about. Yeah, a great day to enjoy some summertime activities. We won't even have to deal with the Saharan dust. In fact, this is a look at Saharan dust, and you can see that uh, it's really confined to northern Texas in the panhandle today, so it is out of the San Antonio metro area. But we do have the pollen count just in and molds are moderate so they're up a little bit from yesterday and with rain in the forecast in the coming week we can expect this number to go up a bit over the next few days uh, but at least for the next 48 hours or so things should 24 hours or so things should be fairly quiet uh, it's not until Tuesday late Monday into Tuesday morning that we'll start to see more scattered activity as far as rain goes outside right now uh, we're seeing mostly cloudy skies 
highs in 78 degrees. These clouds are starting to break up. Winds are calm and we've already got a heat index this morning. 76 in New Braunfels at 74 in Kerrville, 76 in Hondo, 80 in Del Rio, already 80 degrees in Del Rio, 78 the wake up temperature in Gonzales and uh, near Pleasanton. We have got some really thick humidity. Dew points are in the mid 70s everywhere this morning uh, and where this is going to factor into a heat index this afternoon. So whatever the thermometer reads, go ahead and add five degrees to it and that's what it feels like outside uh, throughout the remainder of the day and into the afternoon. On the future cast these morning clouds are going to break up. We'll have puffy cumulus clouds and then we're going to be watching the coastal plain fairly closely because a few showers are expected to develop near Victoria, Beeville uh, later this afternoon and one or two may try to make a run for the I-35 corridor and so that's why today there is a small 10 to 20 percent chance for a stray shower in the afternoon uh, but really it's just mainly going to be a hot day for a lot of folks. So low 90s around San Antonio but upper 90s for Del Rio high temperature of 98, 97 in Laredo, 97 six increase of springs around the metro area 93 for the high in New Braunfels 91 in Kerrville so near 90 degrees for the hill country here in San Antonio at noon it'll be 86 degrees it's going to be humid all day partly cloudy in the afternoon 92 for the high south the southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and again Starting late tomorrow, that's when we'll have uh, increasing rain chances around San Antonio for the remainder of the week. In the weather pattern, there is a rare July cool front across parts of the central plains. Now, this front is not going to make it to San Antonio, but it is going to make it to North Texas, and this is going to fire off some thunderstorms tomorrow in North Texas, and we could get some outflow boundaries from these storms, and that's why tomorrow we have a 30% chance for isolated thunderstorms during the second part of the day. 93 for the high temperature tomorrow and then into Tuesday an upper level low is going to start to move on over. We'll have a good chance for rain on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of this upcoming week. And when all is said and done through the week, uh, some backyards may rack up about two inches of rainfall. Most, however, at least half an inch of rainfall in many spots around San Antonio this week. So look at that. Temperatures are really going to be very un -July like <coughs> with highs in the upper 80s. Oh, excuse you, Sarah. Are you all right? I'm good. Good. All right. Well, maybe it's some of the mold in the air. I probably is. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 821, 78 degrees out. Coming up next on GMSA. We are talking NBA Finals. We're going to have all the highlights right after the break. Plus, a couple of Aggies are taking home some serious cash thanks to a new college rule. We'll explain next in sports. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. What a game. What a game. Tied at 2 all. We're looking at Game 5 of the NBA Finals. The Bucks in Phoenix last night. You could have watched it right here on KSAT 12. So, first quarter, bad pass by the Bucks. Devin Booker with the steal. Ball going to Jay Crowder. Wait for it. And that is the slam. 14-9 Suns. Timeout Bucks. Phoenix with lead 37-21 after quarter one. Second quarter, though, all Bucks. Bobby Portis with the three. Bucks would go on to erase that 16-point deficit. They would lead 50-49. to Drew Holiday scoring 14 points in the second frame. The Bucks led 64-61 at halftime. Let's go to the second half, though. Third quarter, Drew Holiday with the steal. Remember that because you're going to see more. Step back for three. Wait for it. Just so subtle, but it's still three points. 83-75, Milwaukee scored seven in the third. Chris Middleton, Texas A&M grad, 11. Bucks up, up 100 to 90. Look at that turnaround after three. Fourth quarter, P.J. Tucker misses, but Giannis Antetokounmpo with the slam. 104-92, Milwaukee. Suns come back, though. Chris Paul drives baseline, scores. The Suns are down just 1.56 seconds ago. Play of the finals. Drew Holiday ripping it out of Devin Booker's hands, racing to go back, and then there he is. Two-time MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo with the slam with 13 seconds left. Bucks win big, 123-119. to So here's what comes next. Game six, Tuesday night, 8 o'clock in Milwaukee. Bucks going for their first NBA championship in literally 50 years. All right, if you are a Texas A&M fan like our Sarah Spivey, listen up. Two A&M football players set to cash in thanks to the new NIL, name, image, likeness rules, instituted July 1st. Running back Isaiah Spiller, safety Damani Richardson, 
They are going to make $10,000 each for exclusive interviews and an event hosted by a fan website, per multiple sources. The website is text. Ags.com, all part of a deal with College Station Company, Green Print Real Estate Group. The deal, one of the first announced that will pay players for media access. News organizations typically don't pay for interviews with players. Generally, access arranged by each school's sports information department. Players are often made available for a certain time period each. So good for them. Get that cash. There cash you. money. Cat. <laughs> 826, 78 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, the first case of monkeypox has made its way to Texas. What we know about the Dallas resident who brought it. Plus, we are set to hear from the Republican side when it comes to this standoff in the Texas Capitol. That's next in the second half of today's Leading SA segment. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Acosta. It is July 18th. Man, July is flying by. July is flying by. Yesterday, though, you made it outdoors. You saw some sun. It didn't feel like July, though, Sarah Spivey. Oh, why not, Max? Because usually in July, it's like 110 degrees. <laughs> I know. It's usually so hot. Well, you're, you're right. It was cooler than seasonally average. It was still toasty day yesterday. And pretty much what we got yesterday, you can expect today. We are starting off with some morning clouds. Here's a look outside. But those clouds are breaking up. It's 78 degrees, mostly cloudy, with a bit of a heat index already. Now, I do want to say that if you live in Seguin, New Braunfels, or northern Wilson County, there is some patchy fog out there this morning. Visibility down to half a mile in New Braunfels. Visibility down to five miles in Pleasanton. So the further east you go, the chances of seeing some fog out there are higher. But this fog is quickly going to dissipate. Let's take a look at the satellite. You can see that fog here on the satellite imagery. We're looking at clearing skies this afternoon, and it should be a really nice day today. Again, very summer like a high temperature of 92 degrees in San Antonio with a small chance for off chance for a stray shower or thunder shower in the afternoon. Chance for rain is only 20%. So a nice day to close the weekend. Rain chances though really do start to tick up late tomorrow and will last through most of the upcoming week. We'll be watching for pockets of heavy rainfall. Those are possible. So a lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man dead after San Antonio police say he was shot at the Addison Apartments on Babcock in the medical center area. The officers tell us around 2 a.m. Some friends were drinking. That is when a fight started. That's when investigators say the suspect pulled out a gun, shot the 20 year old man in the parking lot, pronounced dead on the scene. The suspect is now in custody, telling police he fired his gun in self defense. The shooting still under investigation right now. Charges are still pending. Also new this morning, fire crews work to put out a fire at an auto shop on the southwest side. Fire officials say an office inside of Tricolor Auto Shop on Southwest Military near South Sarzamora sparked around 1 o'clock this morning. Firefighters were able to quickly knock out that fire. Damages are estimated to be between ten dollars to $15,000. Arson was called out to look into how it started. If we are going to be able as a state to respond even more aggressively, one thing we need is additional funding. Governor Greg Abbott continuing to plead his case for a state funded border wall at the Texas border with Mexico this weekend. The governor joined Del Rio by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, as well as local law enforcement in the area. You can watch the governor's full press conference. Read more about his proposal right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And three of the Texas House Democrats who flew to Washington, D.C. this past week have tested positive for COVID-19. This after breaking quorum to block a GOP voting bill last week. The three lawmakers in question were fully vaccinated, according to a report by the Austin American Statesman. All the Texas House Democrats have been vaccinated, according to a caucus official. Those who have tested positive for COVID-19 will isolate for 10 days and will undergo a PCR coronavirus test as well. According to the statesman, their names have not been released, but we did just speak to Representative Gerwin Hawkins, who says that they are fine and they're doing well at this time. Earlier this morning, as Sarah just said, we spoke with Representative Barbara Gervin Hawkins about the actions of leaving the state to stop or at least postpone the passing of the voting bill. So now we get the Republican perspective. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is also Republican State Representative State Allison. Good morning, Representative. Thank you so much for jo joining us. 
Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for starting your Sunday morning with us. First and foremost, we heard from Representative Gervin Hawkins at 8 a.m. Would you like to respond to any of her comments? Well, uh, just generally, it, it, uh, I'm kind of taken aback. It's like we're talking about two different bills. I, I disagree uh, strongly with uh, the assessment, and I understand the, the historical uh, problems that we've encountered in this country, but, but we're here today. Uh, I've got a copy of the, the, the bill right here. Uh, and the bill, uh, the current draft of House Bill 3 and Senate Bill 1, I also have, uh, contrary to what's been thrown out there, uh, provides a, a lot of improvement, a lot of improvement, including extending voting hours. I don't know where uh, the dialogue comes up that the voting hours are being decreased. They're being extended. Uh, and that's very clear on pages seven to nine of the, of the House bill They're being extended. Uh, and it uses the words at least. Uh, depending on the size of the county and the county, at least nine hours up from eight per day in, the, in early voting, uh, at least 12 uh, in the larger counties, uh, another increase. Uh, provides uh, for the first time that if you're in line in early voting, uh, when the polls close, you still get to vote. Uh, currently, it's just on election day. Uh, the House Bill 3 provides an extension to provide that in early voting as well. Also provides that uh, your employer uh, cannot punish you or uh, do anything to disable you from voting uh, during early voting. Currently, it's just on election day. House Bill 3 extends it to early voting as well. It addresses poll watchers. Uh, there was there been comment about poll watchers being intimidating. Uh, that's addressed specifically. There'd be no intimidation. Uh, the poll watchers are required to uh, the, go through some training under the Senate bill. Uh, under the House bill and the Senate bill requires an oath to be taken that they won't intimidate, uh, won't uh, disrupt voting, won't harass voters. Uh, that I think is extremely important and helpful moving forward. Uh, voting by mail remains in the bill. Uh, it provides for additional uh, information provided to uh, provide on the application, including your driver's license number, last four digits, social security number, uh, the DPS identi personal identification card, if you have that. The Senate uh, has added uh, also the election identification certification can be used. And Representative, uh, have you been in talks with the governor or the speaker? And from your perspective, how do you see all this ending? Well, I, I think if we can get everyone back, uh, just the progress of the bill uh, shows uh, the intent uh, to get something done and that's going to be very helpful and make it easier and more accessible for everyone to vote. But at the same time, uh, make it making it difficult to violate the election laws, which is, is very, very important. But the most important part is making it more easy and accessible. Yes, I've been in meetings with the governor and the speaker, uh, press conferences, meetings. I've had an individual discussion with the, the speaker uh, suggesting that he consider uh, appointing a uh, working group uh, to try to work through any uh, disagreements or misunderstandings under the bill. And I think clearly from the rhetoric I've heard, uh, there's some clear misunderstandings of where this bill is headed today and what's in it right now uh, that I think is so important. So if we can get everybody back, uh, we can get this thing passed. I think big picture, it's we have the inevitable that it's, it's inevitable that it's going to pass. Uh, the, the governor has made it very clear he's going to keep calling special sessions if we have to go all the way up to the uh, 2023 next session. So you, uh, you say no matter what, this is going to pass? This is going to pass. Well, thinking big picture, we had the quorum breaking situation in 2003. The Democrats left for Oklahoma and New Mexico, but that was 18 years ago. So do you see this current state of political divisiveness continuing for the long haul? Or do you think we're going to go back to a sense of bipartisanship if we even had one? Well, one thing that's always uh, pleased me and that I've been so proud of the Texas legislature is the bipartisan approach. That has obviously slipped away. I'm, I'm hopeful we can get it back. I think the world of Representative Barbara Gervin Hawkins, we've worked closely in the past, worked closely this session, and I'd like to see us continue that. Uh, uh, we've worked within the community, we've worked with law enforcement, we've worked with faith-based leaders uh, uh, to try to help things in San Antonio, uh, and, I, and I'm so pleased uh, to work with her and, I, and that can continue. And I think we can do that uh, uh, as, as a whole, uh, the entire body, if we can get back and, and patch this thing up. And I think we're there uh, if we just do it. When they talk about no negotiations, it's been full of negotiations. You can see the course of this bill. 
The last time it was on the House floor before the Democrats walked out the first time, they made two complaints. One, that uh, the last Sunday of early voting didn't start until one o'clock. And that violated the souls of the polls, as, as they called it. That was immediately fixed in, in House Bill 3 and in Senate Bill 1. It's back to early morning. It starts at 9 o'clock. So we addressed that. Their second concern was there was a reduction in the, in the burden of proof uh, to, for a judge to overturn an election. That's addressed by in the House bill. It's out. Uh, so we can see there's been negotiations. We've been the extended hours. Uh, I, I think it's a very good bill. And I think it, it, it does anything except but suppress. And they keep saying this is a suppression bill. I'd like them to show me. Uh, and this request has been made over and over. And we've seen it in editorials that have come down from surprisingly uh, sources that there's been no showing of any suppression. In fact, it's just the opposite. It's expanding and extending the voting opportunities. And that's what we need to be doing. And I think we are. Well, Representative Allison, thank you so much for taking your time and joining us this morning. And for our viewers watching, you can find his interview and also Representative Gervin Hawkins' interview um, later this morning on KSAT.com. Thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. They don't care if it's the police, the National Guard, or whoever it is out there. Certainly we know that they don't care, or they didn't care, that Naya was out there. We know that. We know that. So I think that in order for us... Now this is the police chief in Washington, D.C. when it comes to a six-year-old girl being shot and killed five other people, also wounded when a gunman opened fire Friday night. Police identifying the girl as Naya Courtney. Now, Washington, like a lot of other large cities across the country, seeing a big spike in violent crimes and homicides. A reward of $60,000 now being offered to anyone who can help lead police to the gunman's arrest. All right, well, back here in Texas, in your morning headlines, dozens of people visiting Six Flags Hurricane Harbor Splashdown in Houston were decontaminated after a scary chemical leak. Now, the incident happened yesterday afternoon at the park, according to the Spring, Texas Fire Department. Houston officials say the chemical leak contained a mixture of bleach and sulfuric <clears throat> acid, began in the kiddie pool. A total of 26 people had to be taken to the hospital for treatment. 39 also affected, but they refused to be transported. Now, some people had minor skin and inhalation irritation. Well, Dallas resident is in the hospital isolating after returning from Nigeria with the first ever Texas case of monkeypox. The traveler arrived at Dallas Love Field on July 9th from Atlanta after an overnight flight from Nigeria. According to health officials, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention says the risk to others on the flight in the airport is low, especially in light of COVID-19 related masking policies. But efforts are underway to contact his fellow passengers. Monkeypox is a rare viral pox-like disease from the smallpox family, only milder. Time now is 843, 78 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA, a job fair focused on skilled trades. What you need to know if you want to work for Kumal at ISD. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 78 now. But could we see rain, more and more rain this coming week? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Welcome back. The Kamal Independent School District is hosting several job fairs this week. That's right. It's actually focused on skilled trades. The district specifically looking for mechanics, electricians, custodians, bus drivers, and after-school child care aides. Here's a list of where and when this is all happening. 9 a.m. to noon. Monday, Bill Brown Elementary in Spring Branch. Tuesday, Mountain Valley Elementary in Canyon Lake. Thursday, Morningside Elementary in New Braunfels. <coughs> Friday, Canyon High in New Braunfels. On Wednesday, August 4th, the district will host a job fair for all open positions, including teachers and office staff. You can find that info and more on KamalISD.org. Speaking of Canyon Lake, yesterday would have been a picture perfect day to head out there. It would have, and I'm sure many people enjoyed some time at Canyon Lake. You know what? Today, go to Canyon Lake as well. <laughs> find any body of water that's going to help you cool down. There's really not a significant chance for rainfall today. That story, however, changes later on this week. We did get the pollen count in. Molds are moderate at 730. That's up from yesterday. And with the chance for rain increasing next week, we can expect this number to go up. Outside right now, these morning clouds are starting to break up. It's 79 degrees, although it feels like 83 because of high humidity. And the humidity is going to give us 
us a heat index value today. Dew points are in the mid 70s, which is just about as high as dew points usually get around here. Uh, and so we've even got some fog out there as well. Now visibility is improving in New Braunfels. At one point it was down to a quarter of a mile, but you can still see that visibility less than two miles in New Braunfels and even some limited visibility at JBSA Randolph and in Pleasanton. A wider view here and again, it's mainly confined to the I-35 corridor and points slightly to the east. 77 the wake up temperature in New Braunfels. It's 80 degrees though in Del Rio already. 79 in Catula, 74 in Kerrville and 73 in Rock Springs. Today's forecast looks good for outdoor activities, slowly climbing into the 90s in the afternoon. Low 90s here in San Antonio, 92 for the high. That's still cooler than seasonably average and a small chance 20% for an isolated downpour in the afternoon. Uh, but again, rain is not likely today. South Southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. That 92 Two, though, because of the high humidity, it's going to feel closer to 100. Forecast heat indices uh, reach 98 in San Antonio, 98 in New Braunfels, 101 in Catula, feeling like 104 in Beeville. Now, starting late tomorrow night, that's when our rain chances are going to increase. You can see that there are some hints that we've got uh, some outflow boundaries that are going to be moving through San Antonio tomorrow from some storms up in North Texas. That's why we've got a better chance to see rain tomorrow on Monday, 30% chance for some afternoon, late afternoon downpours. Uh, some of those could produce some heavy rain in spots. That's all because of a falling apart a cold front up in North Texas. That's not going to move through the area, but this low pressure system is. So by Tuesday around San Antonio, scattered showers and storms will be likely, and then we'll see uh, some scattered rain continuing on Wednesday, although most of that should be south of San Antonio and then again on Thursday, scattered showers and storms. And you guessed it, again on Friday, we'll have a chance for some rain as well. So storm chances this week, isolated tomorrow and confined to the afternoon hours. Tuesday, though, 60% chance for scattered rain, 40 on Wednesday, 60 on Thursday. We'll end the work week with a 40% chance for rain on Friday. Now, most of that rain should be out of here by the weekend, so that's some good news. But through Tuesday through Friday, we're going to be monitoring for minor flooding issues, pockets of heavy rain up to two inches in spots and temperatures will be much cooler than seasonably average. We'll once again only see several days with temperatures in the 80s. Very impressive. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Just about 8.51 this morning, 78 degrees out. Well, can you mix and match COVID-19 vaccines? Researchers oh. say it's likely safe and effective, but more data needs to be collected. Tomorrow on GMSA, what scientists say about what they've discovered so far. Today, the Delta variant surging, mask mandates returning. We go one-on-one -on -one with the Surgeon General, plus Martha's on the road, how voters can protect their vote, and a special preview as Jeff Bezos blasts into space. Today on ABC's This Week. In the news you need to know before you go, a family of four in the hospital this morning after a terrifying crash on 1604 near Hebner. Police tell us the driver lost control of the vehicle. It rolled several times. The driver was ejected. There was a woman in the passenger seat. She had to be rescued using the jaws of life. A one-year-old and four-year-old in the back seat. Fortunately, their injuries were only minor. All four in the hospital this morning. The driver, now responsible for the crash, evaluated for a DWI. Still some fog in New Braunfels and Seguin this morning, but we're seeing clearing skies and it's already pretty warm out there. 78 degrees in San Antonio. Great for backyard barbecuing though today. We'll be looking at high temperature right in the low 90s with only a 20% chance for rain in the afternoon. Tomorrow, slightly better rain chance, especially in the later afternoon hours and into the early evening. Then Tuesday through Friday, pockets of heavy rain are possible as we'll see waves of showers and storms. Our highs will only be in the 80s. Once again, this week in July, we are dealing with rain and temperatures in the 80s. Hard to believe, but that's the weather this week. Right. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Sarah Cosa, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a good Sunday.